Now, the bond between mums and their sons is very special, but boys have very different needs as they grow up. Joining us today on Animum PD Pro 3 Coffee Group is parenting advisor Yvonne Godfrey and our teen contributor, Sean Olson. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to have you both back. Uh, Yvonne, let's start with you. Uh, toddlerhood, how do boys develop compared to girls? Well, little boys love action. They love to watch it, be part of it, be in it in any way they can. And because they tend to be less fearless, they're more adventurous and end up in hospital more. <laughs> yes. They also <laughs> struggle a little bit with their emotions, so they're more easily agitated. Uh, they don't know how to self-soothe quite the same. In fact, studies have shown that when their heart rates are monitored, uh, when they're frustrated, that they tend to be elevated and quite distressed. And lastly, they love crowds. So they'd much rather look at a group of faces than an individual. Maybe they're getting ready to be a rugby player in a team. I'm not sure. Wow, so this yeah. is at toddler age. Yeah, this is at toddler age. Um, Sean, do you think that means that boys are less complicated? Think, why am I asking a 16-year-old boy this? Are, are, are boys less complicated than girls? <laughs> it depends on the surrounding and the individual itself. So mm. um, for me, I would think that if my mum and dad were consistently surrounding me and telling me what to do, I would become more complicated because I'd fight back because I'd want my independence. But with that independence, you need the trust. And if the parents trust the son, then the boys won't be as complicated because they can do what they like within their parents' values. So it just depends on that. You are such a wise 16-year-old. He is wise, Such a wise 16-year-old. Uh, Yvonne, I know that as mums, and I find myself falling into this yeah. a lot, um, we are tempted to over-talk the problem. Like We keep repeating ourselves mm. because mm. the boys don't actually acknowledge that they've heard things properly, mm. so we go over and over and then they get grumpy. Uh, that's obviously not the right thing to do, though, is it, with, with boys? With boys, they're not great talkers, little or big. Great at grunting, though. <laughs> great at grunting. Yeah. They do like you to get to the point. They do like you to keep it simple, keep it on track, not too many issues at the same time. And they also don't understand emotional hints. So you've got to frame it up as an outcome. For example, if, if Sean, he's not, but if he was being aggressive towards me, I might say to him, uh, Sean, when you're aggressive to me like that, it causes me to want to distance myself because I actually can be quite afraid sometimes. And so you've got to be very clear about how you feel, what you want, and speak outcomes. Right, so just stomping around and sighing as a parent isn't going to actually make them well, realise that they should do the dishes. Not, no, straight over the head, yeah. didn't get it, didn't want to get it, didn't get it. Yeah. So you've got to be very clear about your expectations. And not be repetitive, as in, because we do tend to do that as mothers, don't we? We want to say, but do you understand? Are you sure you understand? Well, I always say be fair, be clear, and put it in writing. Ah. That way you've thought about it, yes it's fair, yes it's clear and yes it's in writing. And that way put it very pr in a very prominent place and then the boys can't say, well I didn't know. Yes you did because it's right there. Yeah exactly, <laughs> put it right on the, on the front of the fridge because they're going in there an awful lot. Um, Sean, you're 16, uh, so what personality traits do you think your mum has influenced? Um, determination, she's always told me that at the start this is what I've got to do. If you sign up for it, you've got to stick with it yeah. to the end. So there's no giving up halfway through. You're in it, well, to win it's great, but you're in it to the end, so don't give up just because it's getting hard. You signed up for it. And the second one would be the attitude I bring to something. So at home, we've all got our list of chores. They get longer and longer as we get older. <laughs> and in that list of chores, I've got the dishwashers. That's one of mine. And I hate the dishwasher. Oh, I'm sorry, but yeah, who likes emptying the dishwasher? And as that, one day my mum came up to me and said, you've got the dishwasher, you've been doing it for years, I don't know why you're still grumpy about it. Mm. If you can bring a positive attitude to it, it's going to be happier. And unfortunately, she's right. So now, <laughs> I don't enjoy the dishwasher, but hey, I've got to do it, so may as well make it fun. And you know what the funny thing is about the dishwasher, because we have the same issue in my house too, is that we say, well, you could be washing the dishes and drying them, that oh. take you longer. And also the dishwasher takes all of two minutes, and yet it's still a thing, isn't it? It's still a thing. Um, Yvonne, what do mums often get, or what do they forget when it, uh, when it comes to dealing with growing boys? They forget that even though they might come out as tough, whoa, they absolutely love affection. Most boys love to be affectionate. I say the greatest love in the world is a three-year-old boy to his mother. Oh, my. And grandmother, because I had a th yeah. grandson. Uh, so th they've got to show love in an appropriate, appropriate way to them, probably not in front of their mates. Uh, and the second thing that they, they forget is they've got to get their boys to measure up. Just because they're boys doesn't mean to say they get let off the hook and the girls have to do their jobs. Mm, no way. So make sure you teach them how to do things well, and Sean's mother's done that with him, and then expect really great things from them. And can I just add one thing? 
Don't keep calling them baby. Oh, but I love <laughs> my babies. I know, but when you speak baby over them, you get baby. Ugh, you okay. can show the affection, but you want to be talking about them as emerging, growing, beautiful young men. It doesn't mean to say you can't still have the baby in your heart, but I would Ugh. ease off on the speaking it over him. OK. Mm. I won't do that then, Yvonne. Thank you very much. <laughs> you are the expert. <laughs> hey, it's been great having you both in here. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Always a pleasure. Coffee Group is brought to you by Anne Mumpedia Pro 3, the only toddler milk with no added sugars. Now, if you have any questions that you'd like addressed by our parenting panel, message us on the Cafe Facebook page. One contributor will win this very cool e-book from Anne Mum that allows you to record your voice reading the story. Have a listen to this. Frankie the Frightened Frog. Pretty cool, isn't it? Now, last week's winner was Colleen Longstaff. Congratulations. Your e-book is on its way and your topic is coming up in a few weeks as well.